All right, guys, today we're going to make a video that, that hopefully this time doesn't get lost in translations. I actually kind of tried to make this video um, months ago, but it kind of got lost in the translations. Don't know what happened to it, but I was like, this is actually a really cool idea. And I want to make this video. So today we're going to talk about what I look for in a knife and basically the core principles of when it comes to buying, acquiring, and getting knives slash also EDCing them. So this is going to be basically like the list of things that I look for in a knife and when it comes down to like seeing a knife or prioritizing a knife obviously I collect knives so I do obviously get a lot of knives but these are basically the principles of what I look for in each knife that I go after. Of course too there isn't necessarily any hard and fast rules but this is generally what I abide by. There are some knives that just have a really high for me second kind of cool factor like this bounty hunter version of the Manticore X that is not super practical in fairness to EDC. This thing's pretty big, pretty bulky, but I had to have it because it is a really cool collector piece for me. And of course, just because it's a collector piece doesn't mean that it doesn't get used. It's just doesn't quite fit into these rules neatly and nicely, right? So without any further ado, let's jump right into the core of what I look for in a knife. All right, so for me, the first and probably most important piece when it comes to a knife, like when, especially when it comes to carrying a knife, but even buying one, is my POU or philosophy of use. So what that means is there are different knives that are really good for different applications. Most of my knives that I prioritize to are EDC. So that means I want something that is very focused towards everyday carry things that are applicable actions that I could do in an everyday carry type situation like a, a knife that's really good at opening packages, uh, cut and tape up, you know, processing cardboard, doing things like that, that is going to be a heavy priority as opposed to something like, say, this Emerson NSAR, right? This NSAR is not a very applicable EDC knife. Now, I do have my reasons for why I own the NSAR. I definitely like my NSAR for specific reasons. There are, you know, reasons I added this to my collection, but obviously this is not a very good EDC knife. Like, you could probably use it in EDC, but it's pretty big. It's pretty bulky. It has a very blunted tip, once again, for rescue. Like, this is a good rescue knife, but not a very good EDC knife. So the first and most important point when it comes to selecting EDC knives is philosophy of use. Now, of course, my philosophy might actually spec into the NSAR if I need a rescue or more of like an emergency kind of EMT type knife in my particular carry for any given situation. But for the most part, you know, something like this EDC knife, like this TRM Neutron 2 is going to be more applicable. So the next point is going to be blade shape. For me, once again, it goes back to POU. As we talked about with the NSAR, it had a completely blunted tip. So it's not necessarily the most applicable EDC knife. So blade shape is something that I do consider and factor pretty highly. That's why you see a lot of my EDC knives tend to have very similar tip or blade shapes as a whole. Uh, of course, I do like my recurved blades quite a bit. So I do have a few recurved knives in my collection, but by and large, spe largely speaking, a lot of them are going to be either clip points or you know, drop points or something that's just very applicable and practical, very applicable and very practical to EDC, right? So blade shape is a very heavy consideration for me. And once again, making sure that I have signed like a drop point or a clip point is usually what I'm going to go for. You know, um, I will say Warren Cliffs have made quite an impression on me. I do have quite a few of them. And I have also have quite a few Tontos, but by and large, it's going to be very practical blade shapes and tips. Okay, next one up is going to be ergonomics. And ergonomics, I think, are almost just as important as blade shape as a whole. And that is that, like, if a knife sucks to carry, if it's painful, if it's, like, hurting you to carry, like, obviously you're not going to carry it that much. Once again, this also applies to kind of the overall size of the knife. So if you have a really, really big knife, you may not be as incentivized to carry it. Um, and so that's also, like, something that's very much applicable here um, or important, you know, like, worth noting is that you want a knife that is going to you know be comfortable to hold on to and use in the tasks that you want so ergonomics almost goes without saying but still something that I heavily consider all right next one up is going to be overall size and sometimes I feel like overall size plays a little bit 
higher importance not necessarily not necessarily in you know acquiring or gathering of knives but in carry sometimes honestly like if i'm wearing lighter weight um, or athletic pants you know to do some running or trail running i'm really going to think about overall length even more than blade shape and ergonomics because overall length and weight kind of go hand in hand here but at the same time too like if something's too heavy too bulky too big then I'm not really going to be as enthusiastic about carrying that knife as I would something that's you know smaller lighter thinner something like this TRM you know the McNeese is a pretty good option as well things like the bug out things like the Hogue Deca you know those are going to place very highly for me if I really do need something that's lightweight small and very easily carryable uh, because sometimes you know like as much as i like it and generally speaking i do wear you know um cargo pants with a belt so i can support a lot of weight but sometimes carrying something like this hinderer is not always as applicable or easy with lighter weight i fail to open it <laughs> with lighter weight thinner or um just less supportive pants so yeah overall um the overall length size is going to be very applicable there and of course weight all right next one up and pretty high on the list is second kind of cool factor now this one once again to me is pretty important like is a knife cool to carry like do you want to carry it does it give you the fizz you know i've talked about this before in other videos but you know like does that knife genuinely you know meet your interests are you interested in carrying it because if not like genuinely it's probably not going to see a lot of pocket time right like if a knife isn't interesting if it isn't cool if it's not good to use and it's not something that you really care about then it's probably not going to see that much use so you know this is something that's important um, for me of course second kind of cool especially when you have a reasonably large knife collection you're going to want to make sure that you have you know for me it's a priority to make sure especially when acquiring new knives they really have that kind of fizz factor to them and don't get me wrong i like a wide variety of different styles and blades like once again this smock that i'm playing with is very different from things like this hinderer i mean at the core they are pretty similar they're both flipper knives but this is very thin very um, low profile whereas the hinderer is more big robust but they have a lot of similarities and differences that make them enjoyable to carry in their own rights so that is the next point all right next one up and reasonably low on the list which might surprise some people but i think is genuinely congruent to my list here is steel slash heat tree now especially when it comes to edc knives i'm not that big of a like i'm not really that big of a stickler when it comes to having the best heat treat or the best steel because i know realistically speaking like these knives are going to see a good amount of use but they're not going to be pushed to their absolute limits like many of the steels here you know are used for general routine you know daily carry tasks so i'm not going to be putting them into high corrosion environments right i'm not going to be batoning them so i don't need a lot of toughness or you know um strength per se you know i don't need a lot of flexibility so when it comes down to it i'm not going to say no like if there's a good knife made out of magna cut then great if there's a good knife made out of s30v great for me I, I it's not a huge priority and once again neither is heat treat and uh there may be some situations that are you know applicable to needing a better heat treat or you know a knife that's a little bit has a steel that's more in tune or in spec but for the most part like if all you're doing is just cutting through things like rope cordage even if you're cutting up a stake you know you're not going to realistically need the high corrosion resistance of magna cut the high toughness or edge retention like it's it's going to be okay right so you'll see a lot of these knives including the one i'm holding here that is reasonably pricey made out of s30v my strider s30v my emerson's uh, 154 cm even my auto um protect strider smg 154 cm you know you'll see a lot of s30v in this collection and don't get me wrong i have magna cut i have s110 v i have a lot of very nice steels here several offerings of cpm crew wear uh 20 cv i have good steels here s45 vn um all of them right like i have a lot of different steels that are very good quality steels but they're not necessarily my priority and it doesn't mean that i don't appreciate a good steel like i love that my manix has s110v 
and I certainly have tuned it up, sharpened it, and uh, got it to a very nice, very nice edge. Hopefully you guys can see there. But, you know, ultimately it's not like the end of the world if it doesn't have something like S110V or Magna Cut or something like that. It's, it's not really affecting me that much. All right, so next up is going to be legality. Now for me, luckily, and the reason why this is lower on the list is because I live in a state where there's honestly pretty relaxed rules when it comes to um, knife laws. So I don't really have to worry about this one too, too much, but the next one is legality. Of course, making sure that your knife, whatever you're carrying is legal. The last thing you wanna do is catch a charge just because you were wanting to carry some cool EDC knife, right? So once again, not super applicable to me, but um, it is an important thing to keep in mind. And certainly wherever I go, I try to make sure that I'm abiding by the rules. Okay, the last two are kind of intertwined or kind of like they work off of each other and that is value retention and collectability. So these are two things that I like to not necessarily put a whole lot of like stock into. Like I've talked about in other videos, I don't collect knives to, you know, say like, oh, I have tens of thousands of dollars worth of knives, right? Like I'm not trying to flex these knives. And I, I do make joking um, YouTube shorts, you know, for the fun of it, talking about, you know, that kind of stuff. But ultimately it's meant to be a joke. It's not something that I really take stock in. And uh, ultimately, when it comes down to it, I'm not necessarily 100% worried about value retention. However, it is nice to buy knives. Like if you're going to, the reason why I prioritize some degree of value retention is say like I buy a $900 knife, for instance, I would like to at least know or have the confidence that that $900 knife within reason is going to remain a $900 knife. Even if it does see some use, you know, it's going to be around that, right? Like they're, um, I guess what I'm talking about here pretty similarly is the, um, the Grimsmo Norseman is a knife that on drop, like when it gets dropped out, it averages like an MSRP of like $900 to a thousand, even $1,200 sometimes. But those knives, if you try to sell one right now, go for about $600. So, you know, you're talking about ultimately a few hundred dollars of lost value. And once again, that's not necessarily the end of the world, especially if you really want that knife, um, then, you know, go for it. I'm not saying don't buy a knife because it's not a good financial investment, because in my opinion, no knife is a good financial investment. But by and large speaking, when it comes to knives, I try to buy knives that, um, hold their value pretty well so that I can have a knife. And if for whatever reason I need to sell that knife to fund the purchase of more knives or to fund the purchase of something in life, I can have a knife or I can get the value back out that I put into it. So that's kind of my uh, philosophy or mindset. Once again, it's not like I would try to break even or you know try to sell off my knives for a strict profit, but it is nice to have knives that um, hold their value and are quality. So anyways, that's, uh, that's that part. The collection part of it is that once again, I am a knife collector. So sometimes I am more motivated to buy from a brand, like let's say TRM, right? Like I don't have, or I do now, but I didn't have any TRM knives. Whereas I have like eight spider co's, right? So I'm going to be less motivated to buy another spider co as is trying to buy a knife from a brand that I've never tested, I've never played with, I've never owned before. So that's kind of my thought is that, you know, like, don't get me wrong, if Spyderco makes a really good knife, then I'll probably end up buying that knife. But at the same time too, like, that's the reason why I have a McNeese Mac 2, why I have a TRM Neutron. Um, that's why I have a lot of different knives in my collection is so that I can see what other makers make and produce. Not everything, you know, in a whole knife collection should be just Spyderco's, Benchmade, or any one brand. And if you do really like geeking out over one specific brand, that's okay. That's cool. I do have a lot of Chris Reeve knives, for instance, but at the same time too, um, I do like having other brands and experiencing other, you know, companies, manufacturers and what they offer. So that's kind of my mindset when it comes to it. Um, overall, that's uh, how I choose to buy knives, collect knives, and carry them. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully this helps you guys on your adventures. And as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.